Hello friends, in this lecture we will solve a numerical problem on compound stress. So let me read this question out for you. If the stress on two perpendicular planes through a point are 60 Newton per mm square, 40 Newton per mm square, one is tensile stress, one is compressor stress, and then we have shear stress of 30 Newton per mm square and we have been asked to find the stress components and the resultant stress on a plane which is inclined at an angle of 60 degree to the plane that has tensile stress. So at this point you should pause the video and try to solve this question by yourself and then unpause it to see the solution. So what we have here is there are two perpendicular planes on which stresses are acting. One is 16 Newton per mm square tensile stress. Another is 40 Newton per mm square tensile stress. And we have 30 Newton per mm square and we have to find stresses on a plane which is at an angle of 60 degree to the plane which has tensile stress. This plane has tensile stress plane AB. See plane AB has tensile stress 60 Newton per mm square so this angle is 60 degree okay so now we know to find Sigma theta and tau theta we need to use force equilibrium equations we need to use summation fx equal to 0 and summation fy is equal to 0 where x and y are the reference axis parallel to tau theta and sigma theta respectively okay before that we know these are not forces these are stresses so we have to draw a force diagram also now we have 40 here multiplied by its area now first of all let's see what are what these areas are if area of AC is 1 AB area will be cos of 60 which is equal to half and the area of BC will be equal to sine of 60 which is root 3 by 2 so the stress will be 40 root 3 by 2 this force due to shear stress will be 30 root 3 by 2 so just let's simplify these so this is 40 root 3 by 2 that means 20 root 3 this is 30 root 3 by 2 that means 15 root 3 this is 30 by 2 which means 15 and this is 60 by 2 this means 30 and sigma theta multiplied by its own area sigma theta multiplied by its area which is 1 and tau theta multiplied by area 1 that is tau theta this angle was 60 degrees so this angle will be 60 degree plus this angle will be 60 degrees and this angle will be 60 degrees so now let us take summation fx equal to 0 first we have x direction parallel to tau theta so we have tau theta we have 
20 root 3 component in the direction opposite to tau theta so we'll have minus 20 root 3 and the component will be cos component then we have 15 root 3 also in the opposite direction of tau theta so we'll have minus 15 root 3 and this will be sine 60 then we have 30 Newton here this is also in the opposite direction of tau theta so this will be minus 30 and its sine of 60 degrees and then we have 15 Newton and its component will be in the direction of tau theta so this is 15 and its component will be cos cos of 60 degrees this will be equal to 0 now tau theta will be equal to 20 root 3 cos 60 is half then we have plus 15 root 3 sine 60 is root 3 by 2 then we have plus 30 sine 60 is again root 3 by 2 and then we have minus 15 cos 60 is half so tau theta will be equal to 10 root 3 this will be 15 3 is a 45 by 2 and this will be 15 root 3 and this will be minus 15 by 2 15 plus 10 gives you 25 root 3 45 minus 15 gives you 30 30 by 2 is 15 and this results into 58.3 Newton per mm square so let's take summation fy equal to 0 now and we shall calculate the value of sigma theta so let's take summation fy is equal to 0 now we have sigma theta in the positive y direction then we have this force 30 newton and its component in the negative y direction so we have minus 30 and this component will be a cos component 30 cos 60 degrees then we have this 15 Newton force which will have a component in the negative y direction so this is minus 15 and this is sine component other than that we have 20 root 3 this is 20 root 3 and its component is in plus y direction so plus 20 root 3 and this has sine component sine 60 degrees and then we have this 15 root 3 this is 15 root 3 and its component is in negative y direction and the component is cos component so this is cos 60 degrees this is equal to 0 so we have sigma theta is equal to 30 cos 60 is half then we have plus 15 sine 60 is root 3 by 2 then we have minus 20 root 3 sine 60 is again root 3 by 2 and then we have plus 15 root 3 cos 60 is half this 30 by 2 is 15 20 by 2 10 10 into 3 30 minus 30 then we have twice of 15 root 3 by 2 that means we have minus 15 plus 15 root 3 which is equal to 10 point 
nine eight newton per mm square. We have sigma theta equal to ten point nine eight newton per mm square. We have tau theta which is equal to fifty eight point three newton per mm square. So your resultant stress sigma r will be equal to sigma theta square plus tau theta square. This will give a value of fifty nine point three two newton per mm square. So this is your resultant stress. and we can find the angle at which this resultant stress is acting that is equal to tan inverse 58.3 10.98 this will give you an angle of 80 degrees and 15 minutes we can obtain the same results just by substituting the value of sigma x sigma y and tau in the analytical results that we obtained in the previous class here sigma x value will be 40 newton per mm square but you can see that the stress here is compressive so you have to use minus 40 newton per mm square and sigma y is 60 newton per mm square so it has to be positive as it is tensile and tau the shear has to be 30 newton per mm square and the angle at which you have to find out the stress is theta is equal to 60 degrees just by substituting these values in the analytical formulation that we obtained in the previous class we can get the values of sigma theta and tau theta and hence we can find out what is resultant stress and the angle which the resultant stress makes with tau theta so that's it for now we'll meet in another class bye bye